Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming to this press conference. I call this conference today to brief you on our leadership succession plans. You have seen the exchange of letters between me and DPM Heng, as well as a statement of the younger ministers. Let me explain briefly the background before I ask DPM to speak. After the recent Budget and Committee of Supply debates, DPM Heng spoke to me about the succession issue. I told him that I understood and respected his views. However, as he was chosen as the leader of the 4G team by the younger ministers, it was best for him to speak to the ministers himself. I therefore call a meeting of all the ministers, the SMSs, the MOSs, and the speaker and uh, SecGen of NTUC yesterday. The DPM explained his decision to them. I then proposed that the younger ministers caucus to decide how they would respond to DPM's decision and what they wanted to do about the succession. I asked uh, Gan Kim Yong to chair this session as party chairman, and then DPM and myself and the two SMs uh, left them to carry on. Earlier this afternoon, we met the PAP MPs to inform them of the outcome of these discussions. This press conference is to make the news public. I will now invite DPM Heng to speak, and then Kim Yong and Lawrence will brief you on the outcome of the 4G team's caucus and their response to DPM's announcement. So we can. Thank you, Jim. It's a, it's a mic. You press. I have so, to turn okay. off right. my. Yeah. <laughs> Well, good afternoon. More than two years ago, the 4G leadership chose me to lead the team. We have bonded as a team and have worked well together since. COVID-19 struck last year. The pandemic is still raging worldwide, and many expect this to be a prolonged crisis. The virus has also accelerated significant structural shifts, such as strategic competition between major powers, discontent with globalization, and the digital revolution. Also, we must deal with the challenges of an aging population and a desire for greater diversity in politics. Our top priority is to deal with the immediate crisis and keep our people safe. I thank PM for his commitment to stay on until the crisis is over so that he hands over a Singapore that is in good working order to the next leader. The next Prime Minister should have a sufficiently long runway to master the demands of leading our nation, formulate and see through our longer-term strategies and win the confidence and support of Singaporeans to build this shared future together. This year, I'm 60. I will be close to the mid-60s when the crisis is over. Now, when I also consider the ages at which our first three Prime Ministers have taken on the job, I would have too short a runway should I become the next Prime Minister then. We need a leader who, not only, who will not only rebuild Singapore post-COVID-19, but also lead the next phase of our nation-building efforts. When I had a stroke in 2016, with the great work of my medical team and the care and encouragement of my family, friends, colleagues and fellow Singaporeans, I recovered fully. Having worked with PM, ESM and MM, I know that the top job imposes exceptional demands on the office holder. It is in a very different post-COVID world, the demands will be even more exacting. While I'm in good health today, it is in the best interest of the nation for someone who is younger to tackle the huge challenges ahead. After careful deliberation and discussions with my family, I've decided to step aside as leader of the 4G team 
so that a younger leader who will have a longer runway can take over. You know, when I stood in the election in 2011, it was not with the ambition to become the Prime Minister. In fact, I did not even ask what appointments I would get. I think PM very uh, gracefully, I mean, appointed me as a minister, education minister, straight away. But I did not ask what appointments I would get. When, you know, I grew up in a kampong, and the first time I saw the borders of Singapore was when I left Singapore for my overseas study in the UK. The first time I was on a plane, the first time that I used a fork and knife. Now, so, you know, I, my life has been uplifted in significant ways. So has been my family and those of, you know, my friends in school. So, you know, when I was asked, so I've been in public service since the age of 19 and I've been serving in various capacity throughout. Uh, so when I was asked, in fact, several times, I, each time I turned down, but eventually I contested in the 2011 election. Now, I believe that Singapore politics should not be about self. But what is good for Singapore and how we can continue to create the conditions for our people to continue to uplift themselves, just as I have been uplifted. And which was why when PM appointed me as Education Minister, I was delighted because uh, you know, the future of our nation is in, our, is in giving our children the best possible education that you know, we can give. So, Singapore politics is not about self, but what is good for Singapore. And I've been constantly thinking of what is in the best interest of Singapore and Singaporeans. And whether it is to, in Singapore's best interest if the runway for the Prime Minister is too short. And this is especially so in a post-COVID world, because I think the disruptions brought about by COVID will be very significant. So I appreciate, the, I appreciate the support of Singaporeans and have made the decision with the best interests of the nation and our people at heart. So together with PM and the senior ministers, I'll continue to mentor the younger ministers as the 4G develops and identify another leader from among them. I'll remain as Deputy Prime Minister and Coordinating Minister for Economic Policies as well as as Chairman National Research Foundation. I'll continue to do my best in the service of Singapore and Singaporeans. Thank you. Thanks, Suiket. Suiket has been an, uh, an important member of my team for the last 10 years. I'd like to thank him for his many contributions in MOE and MOF, and especially in this past year. In MOE, he led many groundbreaking initiatives, for example, promoting excellence in every school, and also in character and citizenship education. And in MOF, with the Committee for the Future Economy, with the Future Economy Council following up on that, and then the COVID-19 budgets last year. In view of Suikat's decision to stand aside as leader of the 4G team, I discussed with him his future role in Cabinet. I asked him to continue as DPM and Coordinating Minister for Economic Policies, and I'm glad that he's agreed to stay on. He will have a full agenda, building on what he has started. There's urgent work to do to take our economy beyond COVID-19. Will, this will also dovetail with his role as Chairman of the National Research Foundation, where we are making steady progress in promoting research, innovation and enterprise. I also look forward to Suikat continuing to make broader contributions to government policy and to party work. However, DPM will relinquish the finance portfolio at the next cabinet reshuffle. I had discussed this move with DPM last year when we worked out cabinet appointments following the general election. We agreed that budget 2021 would be an important budget not an emergency budget like the five in 2020, 
but a budget to take Singapore beyond COVID-19. I told him it would be good for him to see through Budget 2021, and then he could give up the MOF portfolio to concentrate on the broader coordinating responsibilities. There will be consequential moves in other ministries, and I intend to announce the reshuffle in about two weeks' time. In the party, Sweekat remains first Assistant Secretary General. There will be no change. Sweekat has made a selfless decision to stand aside. His actions are made with the best interests of Singapore in mind, and they are fully in keeping with the spirit of public service and sense of duty that motivated him to step forward and stand for election when I asked him to do so in 2011. Nevertheless, as the 4G statement acknowledges, this is a significant setback to our succession plans. The 4G team want to give themselves more time to work out new succession arrangements. I've therefore agreed to stay on until such time as a new 4G leader is chosen and is ready to take over. Our immediate focus is on the health and economic crisis, but both they and I are very conscious that succession remains an urgent task and cannot be put off indefinitely. I think it will take longer than a few months, but I hope that they will reach a consensus and identify a new leader before the next general elections. I have no intention of staying on longer than necessary. Meanwhile, we must not lose focus on the country's pressing health and economic challenges. My cabinet will continue to work as one united team to overcome these challenges and lead the country forward. That's what Singaporeans expect of us, and rightly so. It's also the only way to maintain confidence in Singapore and to keep our country succeeding year after year. Now let me say a few words in Mandarin. Fu Zhongli Wang Ruijie先生正式提出他将把领导年轻部长的责任交给新的人选。年轻部长接受了他的要求那就是新中双边合作联合委员会等等我们这一代的危机Thank you. You have just heard the uh, DPM's announcement as well as PM's remarks. DPM met the cabinet ministers and political office holders as well as the Secretary General of NTUC earlier to share his decisions with us and explain his reasons for doing so. Thereafter, we discussed among ourselves or with regard to our collective response as well as the next steps. I was there to facilitate the discussion and we generally overall accepted DPM's decision uh, regrettably and agreed that it is in the interest of Singapore. We are glad that he has agreed to stay on as part of the team. I would now like to invite Minister Lawrence Wong to share more details of the outcome of the discussion. Lawrence. Thank you. Good afternoon. The 4G has put out a statement regarding this matter. This statement represents the collective views of all the ministers, SMSs, 
MOSs, the Speaker and Secretary General of NTUC, who were present at the caucus, which party chairman had chaired. We have issued the statement, so let me now briefly highlight some of the key points. Uh, we respect DPM Heng's decision to stand aside as leader of the 4G team. We appreciate what a difficult decision it must have been, but no one could have foreseen the disruption brought about by COVID-19. We know that DPM Heng had made this decision with the long-term interest of Singapore at heart. And so we have accepted the decision regretfully. The decision by DPM exemplifies the qualities that we have long associated with him as a leader. Someone who is selfless, with a deep sense of duty and a strong conviction to do what is best for Singapore and Singaporeans. These traits distinguish DPM as a leader and over the years he has played a critical role in leading key initiatives in the government be it the Singapore Together movement, our national R&D and economic restructuring efforts, or implementing multiple budgets over a short period of time to steer us through the pandemic. Importantly, he has left a strong imprint on all of us in terms of his collaborative and consultative style of leadership. So we are very glad that DPM Heng will remain a key member of the team and will continue his roles as DPM and Coordinating Minister for Economic Policies. We've all benefited from his experience and expertise. Speaking on a personal note, I have worked closely with DPM since the both of us entered politics in 2011, initially in the Ministry of Education and then subsequently in the Ministry of Finance. I have benefited tremendously from his mentorship and guidance, and I'm very grateful for it. All of us on the team look forward to his continued advice and contributions. Ensuring that Singapore emerges stronger from this crisis and tackling Singapore's pressing immediate challenges remain our foremost priority. So under these circumstances, the 4G team will need more time to select a leader from amongst us. That is why we have requested PM Lee to stay on as Prime Minister until such time when a new successor is chosen by the team and is ready to take over. And we are very grateful that PM has agreed to our request. This unexpected turn of events is a setback for our succession planning. We recognise that Singaporeans will be concerned we seek your support and understanding as we choose another leader from the team. We will continue working as a team to serve our people and to earn the confidence and trust of all Singaporeans. Thank you. Thank you. I'll now invite questions uh, from the media. Suicide. Warren. Good afternoon, PM, uh, DPM and Ministers. Uh, Warren Fernandez from The Straits Times. Um, PM, this event, this development is quite unexpected and I think will come as quite a shock to many people in Singapore. And I think one question on many minds will be whether the outcome of the recent general election at both the national and the constituency level had any bearing on the decisions that came to be taken, especially since the factors that have been cited on, on age and health were not unknown factors uh, to everyone, including the 4G, uh, when they, they made their choice of leader. So I think many will be bewildered about this, this sudden uh, rethink. So maybe you could address that. Yeah. I'll ask Suikia to answer, but perhaps I'll just say that uh, he's already Suikia's already explained his decision to step aside uh, in his letter to me, which you have. Uh, the 4G had chosen Suikia as uh, their leader, uh, to be first amongst equals, but he's given them his reasons, and the ministers have accepted his reasons and his decision. Uh, for my part, I have told him that I understand and respect his decision, because it's really to accept it or not is for the ministers to decide. But I know that he has made his decision in the best interest of the party, of the government, and also of Singapore. 
next weekend. Well, um, you know, the, the results in the GE 2020 performance, and in particular uh, in, uh, in the East Coast GRC, is not the reason why I decided to step aside. When I, uh, I have been an MP in Tampines for you know, 10 years and worked very well with the team and uh, I built a certain rapport with the residents. But when East Coast needed reinforcement, I decided to go. It is a completely new ground for me. And uh, I, you know, I, I did my best together with my team. And I, when I went during the campaign period, there were uh, residents who told me that they changed their mind to vote for the PAP since I was there. So uh, that is not for me to judge. Is for others to, to judge. But the, my decision is, as I have uh, emphasized, that you know I am 60 this year, and the COVID situation has disrupted all our plans. I'm very glad that PM is continuing to stay on to see Singapore through this crisis. I think PM has been in politics uh, in fact, he has been a Prime Minister longer than most of us have even been in politics. So we are in a good, safe pair of hands. And that is important. Which means that by the time I take over, I would be in my mid-60s. And the runway is really too short. Uh, and moreover, in a post-COVID world, as I mentioned, you know, when I was preparing budgets, after budget after budgets last year, the one issue that kept coming up in my mind is what will a post-COVID world be like? And first, first, when will this COVID crisis be over? And I think it, is, it will take time, notwithstanding the rollout of vaccinations uh, in Singapore and globally. And second, more critically, what will a post-COVID world look like? I mean, what will change? And as I've uh, mentioned in my uh, letter, I think a lot will change. And so Singapore needs to plan long term and we need someone who is younger with a longer runway to not think in just one or two election terms, but to think about the long term future of Singapore and of Singaporeans. And the challenges that we have, the structural challenges which will creep up day by day and which will become more and more significant and interact in ways which we cannot predict uh, will mean significant challenges ahead for Singapore. So it is better for someone younger with a longer runway with the support of our people to take Singapore through in this next phase of our nation building. Ch Chairman, uh, PM, DPM, may I just yes, uh, add some responses? Uh, yeah. Thanks. I'll go ahead. I think I uh, just want to respond to uh, Warren's question about the decision of the 4G back in 2018. Now, in 2018, the 4G team came together. Uh, we collectively agreed uh, that DPM Hing uh, was the best choice uh, to lead us. Uh, by far, he had the most experience amongst all of us. Uh, as, at MAS, he was a steady pair of hands uh, that steered Singapore uh, through the financial crisis. And uh, since 2011, he had been full minister and at MOE made very significant changes. And certainly at MOF, five years, 10 budgets. So 10 years of effort compacted into five. Uh, but equally importantly, uh, all of us felt that the, the very affable, collaborative, uh, consultative approach that that is very typical of DPM, you know, that he, it, it typifies him. Uh, best represented the kind of governance approach and style uh, that the 4G aspired to. Uh, working together with Singaporeans, listening to them, conversing with them, working together with them. And that inspired us. Uh, and, and since uh, he became the leader of the 4G, 
Uh, we've co coalesced around DPM, we've gelled with him, we've gelled as a team. And most obviously in the last one year, during the crucible of COVID, and it's still a crisis raging on in Singapore and the world. And we worked together, we worked together closely, had to deal with lots of trade-offs. Uh, DPM guided us, consulted us, worked with us, um, managed the different trade-offs, five budgets to secure the lives and livelihoods of Singaporeans. That's a very clear example. Uh, you'll be familiar also with uh, his coordination of the Future Economy Council. It's not just bringing us as younger ministers together, but uh, bringing together captains of industry, leaders of the labour movement, academics, SMEs, associations, all coming together in this very new style of collaborative governance. Uh, and we work together. And uh, the Singapore Together movement, I've had that privilege uh, together with Grace, uh, to work very closely with DPM uh, on that movement, uh, to bring Singaporeans along the journey of nation building. Uh, and so that really uh, exemplifies his style and approach of leadership, and a kind of leadership that all of us, uh, the younger ministers, uh, aspire towards. Uh, and so I say this for myself, and I, I think I say this for the whole of the 4G, that uh, we know DPM's decision was a, a painful and difficult one. Um, we, we accept it re regressively, we understand it, and not just over the last two years, but over the last 10 years, uh, I and my colleagues have looked up to him and continue to do so uh, for guidance, for advice, and for partnership. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question, uh, Chao Pao. Hi, um, Shobi from Zaobao. Um, just a question for DPM. Sorry to press on the same question that uh, Warren just pointed out, but we are quite puzzled with your citation of um, health as well as age as the considerations. Because um, in 2018, when you were chosen as the 4G leader, um, you were already recovering well from the stroke. As for age, well, we all see that younger leaders are no longer the norm. So why the decision? Especially why now, you know, when we are still fighting the COVID um, pandemic? Uh, I have yet another question. We would like to find out what is your thinking process? When was it that you first started to bow over this whole issue of secession? Thank you. Well, uh, uh, Shubhi, I think... Uh, first. <laughs> <laughs> well, first uh, on your first question about you know the, about my my health, I mean after all I, I as you said I've recovered, and indeed the doctors uh, I certified that I had a clean bill of health, and I returned to work because I was confident that my health allowed it. But I. But COVID-19 has really forced us to relook many issues, including uh, succession. And as I said, a post-COVID world will be a very different world. And when I was preparing the five budget last year, I kept thinking about what is different, what is going to be different. And I have to say that each time as I look at it, there are some trends which I think are indeed going to be very different and along the way I added new things that I think is going to be a very different world. Now, so while my health is, uh, is, is good now and I really am very thankful to my medical team for taking such great care of me and the support of my uh, family and friends and colleagues, it is uh, it is a decision that I made taking into account my experience working with MM, working with Mr. Go, and of course working with PM. So I was PPS to MM, and I had many sessions, uh, you know, many, many conversations with him. And uh, he, is, he has been extremely careful about his health. 
But even then, you know, he would from time to time say, it is different when you are older. I worked with uh, ESM uh, when he was the uh, Prime Minister. I was PERMSEC in the Ministry of Trade Industry. We had many overseas trips, many international conferences. I was also had the privilege of observing, observing him at close range. And similarly with PM. Uh, for, so this job of leading the nation is an, places exceptional demands on the person, on the office holder. And uh, while my health is not an issue today, um, I think it is better. But my age, you know, I am, I am 60 this year. And uh, by the time I take over, because of the COVID, you know, it will be, it will, that has been disrupted. And by the time I'll be close to my mid 60s. And with each passing year, I think it will be different. Because I think for most jobs, and I think the, in the, the 60s can be a very productive uh, time of life for most, most of us. But I think the top job imposes exceptional demands on the office holder. And uh, having thought about it very carefully, having discussed with my family, I thought it is better that I step aside, have someone younger with a longer runway who can re-examine many of the issues that uh, we have been looking at, come with a fresh mind, and uh, greater vitality to deal with this very uh, difficult, very challenging situation. Yeah. On your question about when did I start thinking about it? Well, I, I started thinking about it when, you know, when I was appointed because the, I do not want to take on any job which I cannot deliver. As uh, those of you who have worked with me know, I am a workaholic and I, I put my heart and soul into what I do. And therefore, I've been thinking about it as to whether am I the right person. And uh, last year's pandemic was a, a real turning point because I don't think in the history of uh, Singapore that we had a finance minister that had deliver, delivered five budgets in one year. But uh, I am thankful that I have a very good team who work very well with me and that we are able to do what we had to do under very exceptional circumstances. And given that, you know, crisis is not going to be a once in a long while affair, I, in the last uh, 20 odd years, I've gone through three major crises, Asian financial crisis, the global financial crisis, and now the pandemic. Uh, or each one worse than the previous. So I think it is better for someone who is younger, who have a longer runway, uh, to take on this job. Next, uh, Walter. Uh, PM. Assuming we accept uh, DPM's, uh, sorry, Walter Fernandez, Channel News Asia. If we accept uh, DPM's reasons for wanting to step down, can you help us to understand that you had this conversation with him after the general elections to relinquish his portfolio as finance minister. Yeah. Now that he has chosen to step aside as the leader of the 4G, you have decided to retain him as DPM. Yes. Is there an opportunity to step up some of the younger 4G men ministers to the DPM level to train them, to test them, while DPM continues, I mean, DPM Heng Swee continues as coordinating minister, or are they not ready to step up? Well, you're asking me about my future plans and in particular my next press conference. So uh, you will get an answer in due course. Uh, today's focus is on uh, DPM's role. I've uh, asked him to stay on as DPM and coordinating minister, um, give up the finance portfolio, but as DPM and coordinating minister, I think he will have his hands full. Because we've had strong budgets to see us through the emergency. It's emergency medicine. Now you need long-term strengthening, reinforcement, building, and that's not just budgets, but also economic policies and also educational and social policies too. And so as, uh, as coordinating minister, these are all things which will preoccupy him in MOF, in MTI, in MOM, in MCI, working with the ministers and bringing them together. Uh, there's also the external work, the FEC, the Future Economy Council, 
and work with our partners on all the different sectors of the economy, such as uh, working on the ITMs, the industry transformation plans, uh, uh, maps, which we have. Suiket is also chairman of the NRF, and there uh, our efforts are starting to bear fruit, and we need to develop the whole ecosystem of research, enterprise, innovation, and make the connection from basic research to applied research to national challenges and make a difference to the future of Singapore in strategic areas. So it dovetails nicely with uh, the economic work. And the other responsibility which Suikat will have is to chair the JCBC, which is the Joint Committee on Bilateral Cooperation with China, Joint Council on Bilateral Cooperation with China. It's an important forum for engaging them and promoting our extensive ties with them. Uh, he's also going to continue to oversee Singapore together and ensure that the public and community participate fully in uh, our um, uh, national deliberations and uh, have a more active part helping to uh, come up with and to formulate policies. So I think for all the, doing all this work, it's useful to be both DPM and coordinating minister. In due course, when uh, younger ministers are ready to be elevated to be DPM, at that point we can think about further changes. This is a uh, continuing evolution. I'm Chim Kang from uh, Middle Corp Chinese News. I have a question for Minister Chan. Uh, in the press conference on the new cabinet lined up last year, uh, last July, you mentioned that the 4G team has no plans to uh, discuss or change support for uh, DPM Heng as leader. Is there a change now and why? And also a follow-up question that uh, you were chosen as DPM's deputy. So are you next in line in the succession? Thank you. Thank you, Shin Kang, for the questions. On the first question, prior to DPM Heng's decision to step aside, we were all working on the basis that the issue of succession has been settled. We were all entirely focused on making sure that Singapore can get through the COVID situation and emerge stronger. On the health side, on the economic side, and all other dimensions, we wanted Singapore to emerge stronger from this. Now that DPM has decided to step aside, we will need to relook at the issue of succession. We understand where DPM is coming from. We know that it has been a difficult decision for him and he has done it in the best interest of Singapore. That is just Sweet Kid's character. Always thinking about what's best for Singapore and Singaporeans. So now we will, the team will continue to remain focused on making sure that Singapore can emerge stronger from this COVID pandemic and at the same time, to establish the foundations for our future success. In making any decision, all of us in the team will continue to put the interests of Singapore and Singaporeans foremost. Just as how we have been taught, how it has been shown to us, and how previous generations of leaders have all exemplified this. To your second question, when DPM Heng chose me as his deputy in 2018 and the team supported it, now that DPM has decided to step aside as a leader of the 4G, the 4G team should be given the opportunity to relook at the question of succession holistically. And we will make a collective decision 
on who will be the next leader for the 4G in due course. Now, having said that, I must add that our leadership succession plans goes beyond just choosing a leader. It is more than that. It is always about finding and forming the strongest team possible for Singapore so that Singapore have the best chance to defy the odds of history to not only survive but to thrive. And that will continue to do and that is what our entire team is committed to do for Singapore and all Singaporeans. Um, mothership. Martino. Hi, good afternoon, PM and DPM. Uh, I'm Martino from Mothership. Are there any likely candidates tipped to become the next leader of 4G? In 2018, there are three front runners. Are there any front runners this time? And is there anyone in the lead? Thank you. You can can. Let me take that question. Thank you, Martino. But maybe before I start, I just also want to say, uh, 2015, when I came into government, I took over from Suiket and the Ministry of Education, and it has been a privilege. As you know, the education system went through uh, many changes and going through a reform process, and I think really Suiket planted the seeds got the snowball rolling, set the tone, reducing the overemphasis on academic results, created multiple pathways through Aspire, and that made my job a lot easier, and we keep the momentum going. So it's been a privilege, and I look forward to continue to work with Sweet Um On Martino's question, for a country like Singapore, I think a good government is critical and the leadership of that government is also therefore very important. So therefore, succession planning is a very, very serious matter. But we tend, there's a, always a tendency to look at succession planning in terms of a race. Now. Who's in front, who's behind, who overtook who, what is the relative competitive position of each individual? But actually, that is not the PAP way. Our way is fundamentally, we look at the team, how the team work together, how we complement each other's strengths, and where we have shortcomings, which we all do, how do we support each other? So with time, if we take that team approach, with time, you develop chemistry, dynamics, camaraderie, rapport, and over time, the individual members rally around someone who then emerge as a leader, first among equals. So first among equals doesn't mean the person is the boss that direct people to do work, but the person that can best bring out the talent and strengths of everybody else, and the team builder. So fundamentally, it's different. When it's a race, you only have one winner at the end, standing on the podium with a medal around his or her neck. With a team, we fight heart and soul on the field. And if we win, we have a trophy for the nation. And in that winning team, you will have a captain that can bring out the best of everybody. So that process of developing a strong team and rallying around a first among equal leader takes some time. Um, what we have just learned is a big change, a big reconfiguration. So we seek the understanding and support. We seek your understanding and support to give us some time to regroup. And in due course, we will select a leader amongst us. Rest assured, the 4G team, we are very aware, very conscious of the urgency and seriousness of this task. Rohita Haryan, Zak. Uh, 
I'm Sa'ad uh, from Vitarent. Uh, can I uh, ask a question to Minister Masagos? Because I want to ask the Malay with permission. Uh, Menteri Masagos, uh, Menteri telah menjadi rakan sepasukan dengan DPM Hing untuk sekian lama sebelum ini. Jadikah apakah pandangan uh, Menteri Masagos mengenai uh, DPM Hing uh, dan keputusan beliau untuk uh, menepikan diri daripada menjadi uh, Perdana Menteri. Terima kasih. Terima kasih, Cik Saad. Uh, pasukan 4G telah memilih DPM pemimpin kami pada tahun 2018. Beliaulah yang paling berpengalaman di uh, berpengalaman di kalangan kami, bersifat konsultatif dan punya semangat uh, kesepakuan ke, sepaku, uh, ke Pasukanan yang kami sangat inginkan uh, dari sebagai gaya kepimpinan untuk uh, pasukan 4G. Uh, kami faham keputusan DPM adalah sangat sukar. Uh, kami tentu ia menghampakan kami dan kami akur rakyat prihatin. Uh, kami menerima uh, dan menghormati keputusannya. Yang jelas selama ini PAP telah menghasilkan kepimpinan yang terbaik, yang kuat, yang penting mampu bekerjasama sebagai pasukan yang bersepadu. Setiap anggota pasukan 4G telah menganggota berpengalaman kerana menerajui portfolio masing-masing bertahun-tahun dan juga sokong menyokong satu sama lain. Malah krisis COVID-19 yang kami semua sebagai rakyat mengharungi telah menguatkan lagi ikatan kami dan sekarang ini kami berani mengatakan kami semakin kuat sebagai secara individu dan sebagai pasukan. Kami harap masyarakat faham bahawa kami perlu waktu untuk memilih pemimpin baru pada masa yang sesuai. Kami akan terus memberi fokus untuk bersama menjamin kesejahteraan rakyat mengatasi krisis wabak COVID-19 dan juga membuat persiapan menghadapi cabaran cabaran baru setelah COVID-19 ini. Kami pasukan 4G berazam untuk mengekalkan tahap kepercayaan rakyat Singapura kepada kami dan menjadi pasukan yang kuat, berusaha yang terbaik bagi warga dan rakyat Singapura. Zakir. I was just wondering, Madam Mas, for the benefit of the other media, would you summarize your aid in English? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Mas and I have been together the longest since our days in uh, Tampines. The 4G selected DPM uh, in 2018 as our leader because he was the most experienced among us. Uh, he was very consultative and has a team uh, team style of leadership that engenders uh, the team spirit that we all in the 4G look out for. Uh, we know that the decision that DPM has made is a very difficult one and we respect this decision. We know this is a setback and for sure the uh, Singaporeans are concerned. But the PAP has always delivered strong leadership because of our ability to work as a cohesive team. Uh, all of us over the years have held on to portfolios, working together as a team. And COVID-19 especially has brought us together even more, tested us in areas where we would never have done if not for such a crisis. And I think we have come out better as individuals as well as a team. Now, we also will be choosing a new leader in due course, and we hope Singaporeans will give us time to do that. In the meantime, our focus is to make sure all of us come out of this crisis better, well, and we we'll focus on the well-being of Singaporeans and also preparing for post-COVID-19. 
4G team is determined to ensure that we retain the trust of Singaporeans and always do what's best for Singapore and Singaporeans. Thank you. Hi, uh, PM Minister Zakir Hussein from The Straits Times. Um, I think uh, we, take, uh, we heard Minister Ong describe the urgency of the task of um, the 4G team deciding on, on the leader. Um, can Singaporeans expect, say, a rough timeline as well as uh, a bit more detail on the process for selecting the next 4G leader? Um, and does PM and ministers expect this to be done, say, well ahead of the next GE or in good time? Well, as I said in my uh, main statement just now, this is a matter which is on top of their minds. The immediate priority is to deal with the health and um, economic crisis, but we know that succession is a very, very important and urgent issue. Uh, as uh, Yi Kang explained just now, choosing a leader isn't just um, ranking the people and saying who's going to be the best choice. It's also really about team building and developing the team and developing the relationships amongst the team members so that over time, from that balance and that chemistry, you are able to identify who amongst the people can most maximize the performance of the team and make all the pieces fit together and add up to more than the sum of its parts. This is a process which takes more than a few months, but I think that it should not take more than a couple of years. And I hope that very much I will be, have a clear outcome before the next general election. And I, that would be a reasonable time frame to work towards. Um, in fact, that time frame is also the reason why um, we have decided to come out with this question, with this issue now, uh, rather than wait until a new leader is identified. Because the neatest thing to do would be uh, one person steps aside and then well, another person immediately steps into place and it's seamless. And if it was something which you could do within a few days or weeks or even a couple of months, I think it's something which we would have seriously considered. That in that case, let's finish the process, uh, li line up everything neatly, and then go up with one announcement. But if we are talking about a process which is likely to, likely to take a few years, then once the development, the first development has taken place, that you know that the minister is, is stepping aside. I think that is important material information which it is our responsibility to tell our stakeholders. They have to know. The ministers have to know. The public has to know. And amongst the ministers, amongst the team, knowing this, uh, you will have to reshape and reconfigure the relationships and the responsibilities in order that a new balance will be struck and a new person can emerge and not be frozen into an old position which is no longer reflective of what, what is actually going to happen. And the public also has to know uh, what the real status is uh, in order to know what progress is being made and where they stand. Because otherwise, if you just continue on the basis of uh, the, the previous information, when something material has happened, if we were a listed company, you know, we would have clear obligations to make this public within a quite quick time, which is what we have done. Uh, hi, Minister Sen. I'm Yongmei from uh, Zhao Bao. The 4G has chosen uh, DPM Sengs as the leader two years ago. How is it that uh, the arrangement cannot be seen through uh, for Singapore is so well known for its implementation and planning? And do you not think that uh, the past two years has been wasted uh, and also, uh, without, without a clear leader for the 4G team, will the, 4G team work, will, will the working of the 4G team be affected? Maybe, Grace, you want to respond to that? Thank you, uh, Kim Yong, and thank you uh, for the question. Um, indeed, it is, you're right, in 2018, DPM was our choice, uh, but I think since then, COVID-19 has served us a curveball uh, that really disrupted our plans. We didn't foresee that, 
I think nobody could foresee the disruption uh, that COVID has brought to our lives, to, to not just in Singapore, the whole world. So it is you know, important for us to understand DPM's decision. He has explained that. And I think we regret that we accept. And I must put on record that I have um, great admiration uh, of working with DPM Heng as a leader. I uh, worked with him very closely uh, in uh, the SG Together. Uh, he has enabled uh, a lot of the platforms, participation of Singaporeans, all sectors. So I really uh, you know, enjoyed uh, working with him tremendously. But this is really, I'm saddened by his decision. But I think he has explained, so I won't uh, belabor the point. But I think now it is on us to choose a new leader, and we must do so uh, with time. So we, you know, we hope that Singaporeans will give us the time to do so. But if you look at 2018 to now, ironically, uh, the disruptions of COVID-19 has given us a lot of tests and challenges to really work as a team and also hone our experience as ministers. The 4G team has been actively involved, actively managing the COVID-19 pandemic. And in fact, the 4G ministers uh, actually host most of the ministries. And I think the last few years, uh, we have grown. We have grown as individual ministers. We have gained experience. We have fostered greater connection with Singaporeans because the, the crisis required us to do so. So there's been a lot of changes, whether it is in changing the way that we go about our daily lives, having a circuit breaker, safe distancing management, managing the borders, managing the migrant workers, all these challenges that have come our way. I think Singaporeans could see how the 4G ministers have fared and have really taken on the role in their stride. We have also grown as a team because many of these challenges they've just described actually involve a lot of teamwork, a lot of coordination behind the scene. And I think this has really bode well, you know, as my colleagues Desmond, as Yi Kang have said. Um, actually, we have really gelled as a team. We have many opportunities to debate, to argue, to disagree, to agree with one another. And I think this has given us confidence that we will be able to select our new leader in good time. But ultimately, I think we are very aware that it is Singaporean that will have to make the decision whether the team leader and the team are acceptable. So on that note, we want to work very, very closely with Singaporeans to gain their confidence and their trust in us. Chan Hi, my question is for I'm Gawai from Media Corp Channel, uh, Chinese News. My question is for Minister Gan. Um, the PAP has also been good in terms of forward planning, and also with this big shift, how can Singaporean continue to you know, have confidence in the government, or to be exact, the PAP leadership? We we'll appreciate if Minister Gan could answer in Mandarin. Thank you. Thank you. First, let me thank the government for the support of the people. 和支持，我们非常珍惜大家的支持，我们不会把它当作是理所当然的。我们的团队也将继续努力，谋求国人的幸福。副总理啊，做出的今天的这个宣布呢，是经过慎重的考虑的。他以国家的利益为重，我们也尊重他的决定。我相信大家也可以理解他的决定。领导行动党和领导国家。不是单靠个人的才干，而是一个团队。人民行动党的使命是确保有一批能够以民为先、以国为重、努力改善国人生活的团队。副总理愿意愿意留任在内阁，我们非常的感激。他的经验也将有助于培育年轻的部长们。虽然由于冠病的影响和副总理的这个决定呢，导致领导交替的步伐。有所延迟
，我们会继续尽力，确保这个领导交替的工作会继续的进行。这可能需要一点时间，我们也不能够操之过急。总理依然希望在新的领袖能够出炉之后呢，并且做好准备之后，尽早的交棒。这个在总理刚才的讲话中也已经表明了。副总理是我们的团队里面当初一致推选的领袖，我们也会全心全意的继续支持他的这项的决定，也支支持他在内阁里面继续的工作。谢谢。Afternoon, PM uh, ministers. <coughs> PM, the next prime minister will need a decent runway to become the prime minister. There can't be a short takeoff. And uh, DPM Heng has mentioned that he expects the crisis to last at least until he's in his mid 60s, which will be about five years from now. So, can we expect you to be the prime minister for another five years at least? I hope not. I ask. As I said just now, um, I will stay on a bit longer so that the new successor can be identified and can get ready. And as soon as he's ready, I would like to hand over to him. I hope then to be able to help him and his team to succeed and to take Singapore forward beyond the time when I'm Prime Minister. I think that's a responsible thing to do. I, I know people look around the world and they look at... Um, the United States, they look at some models closer to home, and they say, you, you are still very young in comparison. Well, maybe so, but those are different models for different countries. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. But in Singapore, I think it's not just wanting a younger minister with energy and uh, um, the runway, but also wanting a system where we are able to carry this from PM to PM, from government to government, and have a system which will provide high-quality government for the long term for Singapore. And that's what I would like to tr be able to do. We have time for two more questions, probably. Uh, Walter? PM, um, you've spoken about this incident, I mean, these developments as a significant setback. The 4G have said that they need time to select their next leader. So there is going to be a period of uncertainty in the leadership succession. How do you think the superpowers like China, our neighbours like Malaysia and Indonesia, and most importantly, perhaps the investors, the foreign investors who are here, going to navigate this period of uncertainty? And will it be a case of them being a little bit uncertain about how to deal with the ministers? Maybe I'll ask uh, Chun Singh to respond to the uh, investors first. Thank you, Walter, for your questions. Clear succession planning, policy coherence, policy consistency have been the hallmarks of our system. These are also the factors that have put us in good stead to attract the long-term investments to plant their investments in Singapore and create good jobs for all Singaporeans. This is also the reason why we have chosen to be upfront with our people, with our investors, our foreign counterparts, on our circumstances so that we can minimise any unwarranted speculation. Now, notwithstanding the latest developments, the team, the system, the plans, the processes, the policies are all still in place to provide that continuity and stability for the investors. And we will continue to work hard to distinguish ourselves as a safe harbour for investors to mobilise their capital, aggregate their talent, protect their intellectual property amidst the global uncertainties. So all our systems, plans, processes, policies were developed by the team collectively. 
Notwithstanding this development, the Prime Minister, the Senior Ministers, DPM, and the various ministers in charge of our economic policies, foreign policies, are all still around. And because we have developed those plans collectively, I think the investors can continue to expect coherence and continuity in our approach. And investors can continue to be confident in the way that we will conduct ourselves. And the two proof points to convince the investors will be this. Our teamwork and our laser-sharp focus on ensuring that we deliver on our promise to bring Singapore to a higher plane, to emerge stronger from this crisis, and to deliver a better quality of life for all our people. So when people look at us, I think they will continue to see these two proof points. The teamwork that has brought us here so far and will continue to bring us forward, and also the laser-sharp focus on delivery of our promises to our country and our people. I'll just add a little bit on the, how foreign countries will see us. I would say our politics in Singapore works very differently than politics in nearly every foreign country. Uh, it's a fact, and it's, I think, the reason why Singapore politics works well for Singapore. As a result, when, they, when we interact with leaders and ministers from other countries, they assess us, they make their assessments, and I think by and large they have a respect for us and we're able uh, to work with them. So I think they will assess us based on the quality of leadership which our political system and political process produces. How will they react to this change? I would say in the first instance, top line, the team has not changed. The same ministers are still there. I'm still the PM, Suiket is still the DPM, and they'll be dealing with the same people, and that's what matters to them if you take the two, three, four-year point of view, which in diplomacy is quite a long time. In the longer term, what they will notice is the quality of the Singapore ministers and PMs and DPMs. And if out of this process we are able to sustain high quality ministers and leaders for the country, then I think that it will have been the right path forward for Singapore. If at the end of this, the standards go down and they look at us and say, ah, it's no different from so many other places, we are no longer of value to them. And that Singapore will be the worse off for it. So I think that's how they will see it. Not so much whether there is um, a, a, what we would call a relief in place, in progress. One person standing aside, another person getting prepared to come in. But what are the outcomes in terms of persons in charge, quality, and the direction for the country? And that is what we must make sure we can maintain and keep stable while working through the succession process. Right? If I could just add, uh, you know, what I think is uh, the um, um, first on our domestic economy, how do you continue to keep Singapore's economy competitive so as to draw in uh, investments? As the PM explained earlier on, I remain as coordinating minister for economic policy. And as you know, we have uh, started ITM work five years ago. I gave an update in Parliament on the progress of the ITM work. And uh, our next phase is really that how do we continue to build deeper capabilities? We have announced an RIEC plan, Research, Innovation and Enterprise uh, Plan. And uh, that is 25 billion over the next five years, 2021 to 2025. And I think that the ITMs have allowed us to make a breakthrough in terms of bringing different agencies work together to 
uh, help companies, to enable companies, enable our workers to develop the deep skills and to undertake this transformation. And we started this work about transformation five years ago. And today I am very glad to see that all over the world, this word is being used. Uh, but we have a head start and then we must build on that. And by bringing our, I'm also chairman of National Research Foundation, I've set out what we are going to invest in. And what I'm hoping to do is to work with all the agencies to bring this together. And I have uh, also recently discussed with the ministers and the 4G team on how we integrate the work of overseeing our research with how do we promote the use of that research finding for innovation and to promote uh, entrepreneurship. Also, in the midst of COVID, in the midst of all this, uh, you know, we set up the Emerging Stronger Task Force, co-chaired by Minister Desmond Lee and uh, Mr. Tan Chong Ming. And we had done a press conference a few months back. Uh, your, uh, many of your reporters were there, they reported on the work. So the Emerging Stronger Task Force will be uh, delivering its reports later. I had uh, fairly uh, detailed discussions with Mr. Tan Chong Ming and Desmond on, on the work. And I think what distinguishes Singapore from an investor's point of view is the ability of the ministries to work together because the sum must be greater than, you know, uh, the whole must be greater than some of its parts. And I think that's what we are trying to achieve. And as part of the Emerging Stronger Task Force, with this government and the private sector and our academia working together, uh, it has been very helpful. So one of the important innovations from that Emerging Stronger Task Force is this whole idea of alliances for action. So from ITMs, we are moving to alliances for action. And the other area which I would be focusing, now that I have more time, uh, that I, have the, my, I don't have to deal with uh, more budgets, I would uh, uh, want to focus uh, our work on our workers and skills. Because I think technology, globalization is going to completely reshape the nature of work in the years ahead. And again, we have a head start. So I think we are able to do that well. And uh, with political stability, uh, we will be able to continue to draw in investments and our companies can, companies can use Singapore as a base to get out to the region. And I think our vision of a global Asia node uh, will, for, of innovation, uh, of, of innovation, technology, innovation, and enterprise uh, will be a very uh, powerful one. I've, and just in the last few weeks, I had so many sessions with so many business leaders. So I, indeed, I will be able to devote more time to doing that. And I'll say a bit more about how we're going to do that. Uh, later. And of course, I think PM also mentioned that uh, I will continue to chair the uh, JCBC, and I think I would like to work closely with Vice Premier Han Chun in uh, China on how we can uh, work on this. And at the same time, this morning, I just had a Zoom call with one of our senior leaders in our region, talking about how we can work together on many of the uh, exciting new areas, including the area involving uh, Grace Ministry on Sustainability. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I'll, I'll give the last question to Surya. Surya hasn't had a chance to ask any question. Go ahead. M and uh, ministers, uh, this question is for DPM Heng. Um, next month, I think, will mark your exactly 10 years as a member of parliament. So. <laughs> Yes, uh, with this uh, sudden announcement, I guess uh, the next uh, natural question to ask would be, uh, will you still uh, run in the next uh, GE? Uh, will you still contest? And yes or no, uh, why? Thank you. Well, uh, well, thank you for the question. First, uh, let, me, uh, let me first thank my residents in the East Coast GRC for giving me and my team their mandate. And uh, my team and I, remain as committed as before uh, to serving them. Now, we value the support uh, given to us, I mean, as, as a party, and we'll continually fight to uh, retain it. The PAP has never taken the support of Singaporeans for granted. You know? And I will continue to serve uh, Singaporeans 
to the best of my ability in ways which are useful and meaningful. And as I have explained uh, in my, uh, in, as I shared with you, my, uh, in a way, my life history, you know, I have been in public service since serving NS at the age of 19. And uh, the, I will continue to do what is, I spent uh, my, my entire career in the public service until I entered politics in 2011. So I started serving at the age of 19. Now I am, you know, I'm 60. So for the last 41 years, uh, the bulk of my life has been in the public service, the last 10 years in, uh, in political uh, appointments. And, uh, you know, we, we will, I will continue to do what is uh, useful and for Singaporeans and what is meaningful. Thank you. Thanks. I think that's a good question to wrap up the uh, conference. Uh, this is a, we have come to the end of this uh, uh, press conference. I want to thank all of you for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you.